Johnny Polo interviews Bret Hart. The Owen Hart promo was in the ring. This one was a pre-tape backstage. Bret, exp- ex- Bret explains he wears his jacket with a fringe because he is the ring general. Owen, you were just another... I never knew that. <laughs> I always thought it looked like... A, that, like was, a, that was... It's supposed to look like military? I always thought it looked like a hotel building. Well, <laughs> well you know, it's kind of like, you know, those... I believe the term is... Sergeant Pepper had those types of jackets, and, you know, they were generals, I guess. Epa- were they not? Sergeants? Uh, how do you pronounce it? Epaulette? The, the shoulder fringe he's got there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, anyway, Crush, you're, a lot of, you're just a lot of talk, just like everybody else. Everybody talks about beating Bret Hart, but seldom do they ever do it. <laughs> you never heard Bret Hart so loud as when he shouted, seldom, right there. So it's Crush versus Bret Hart, and as Brian noted, they did nothing. <laughs> nothing. They stalled forever to build to a test of strength. They did a test of strength forever. Somehow, Brett's reversal got their hands stuck together. They had to be like unwelded, for, and so they could just sell their hands for a while. <laughs> I actually wrote this about a Bret Hart match in all caps. Holy shit, you lazy bastards. Okay, Vinny, hold on a second. <laughs> You're entitled to your opinion, bro. Okay, but, but, th- I've noticed this with you. If a match is 20 minutes long, and they do nothing for like seven minutes... You're mentally done with the match. Even if at minute eight, it all of a sudden like becomes good. Sure. You're 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 still so angry about the seven minutes of doing nothing yeah. that you decide that the whole rest of the match is shit. Because listen, you're not wrong about the beginning of this match. Mm. I was watching this match and I thought, you know, Brett wants to have a good match with Crush. And the only way to do that is to not have Crush do anything. And so, like, they he avoided him, and then they do the test of strength, and then they do the reversal, and, you know, he's doing nothing with this guy. He's idiot-proofing this match. But then they get the heat. And so now Crush has to work over Bret Hart. And I thought the heat was good. And, and honest to God, by the end of this match, I thought, you know what? It's a, it's a short list, but as far as, like, non-demolition crush, how many crush matches have we seen better than this one? Very like few. Like, zero? Very, very, very few. And, and then not only that, not only that, I'm watching this match, and all of a sudden they do some spot or whatever, and Brett does a small package, and all of a sudden there's Owen Hart. The referee's distracted. Owen Hart turns over the small package. And the referee turns around and he counts one. And he counts two. And at that point, like my like time totally stood still. And my brain, like I I I I, I an hours where the thing went through my head. It was like there's no way that crush is pinning Bret Hart with a reverse small package on the go-home show before WrestleMania 10. There's no way that they did this. This is impossible. The referee's hand, there's no way his hand hits the bat for the third time. I remember being so into WWE at this period. I have no memory of this. There's no way it happens. But then I start thinking, well, if Bret Hart kicks out, then what are they going to do? Like, they already did the own heart reversal. What did they do this for? if there's no point to it like all of this is going through my head then I start thinking about Montreal and I start thinking about how Sami Zayn got beaten and how these fans go well you can't end Roman Reigns streak a month before Wrestlemania I mean he's been champion for 900 days like how is Cody gonna get over if he doesn't end Roman Reigns 900 day streak how could how could he possibly lose six weeks before all of this is going through my head and then the referee goes And Crush, Crush has pinned Bret the Hitman Hart on the go-home show before WrestleMania 10. What? Yeah. You thought all about that. You thought all of that between two. All of that in a split second. It was (laughs) was like my life flashed before my eyes. It was like the moment before something horrible happens. Your whole life. You relive your whole life. All of that went through my head in that split second. Hmm. And then he, and then it, and it happened. And I was like, 
Okay, hold on a second. Like, I get, I get Bret Hart has two matches, and he loses to his brother, but then he beats Yokozuna because now he has a feud that goes through the summer. That makes sense. But crush, pinned, Bret the Hitman Hart on the go-home show before WrestleMania? How did that happen? I feel like Mark. It was it was mind boggling. <laughs> it was baffling. Mind blowing. Yeah. I'm sweating profusely at the thought of what I just saw. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago we had uh there was an attack by Yoko and um and Lex Luger had to come in and run off Yoko who was attacking Brett. And now they have crush pin Brett. WWE does not want us to think that Bret Hart can win this title, much less beat his brother. Yeah, that all that all happened, and 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 my reaction was similar to Brian's. Bret Hart goes into that title match of Mania on a two match losing streak. Mm-hmm. One of them a pinfall to Crush, and again they needed to Crush. Owen yeah. was going to be challenging Bret all the way through SummerSlam, so that made total sense. Crush beyond being Crush. Spoiler, I almost positive he does not beat Randy Savage and he falls anywhere after WrestleMania. No, he does not. I don't know what the point of this win was. I, I don't know. I don't understand. It, Dude, and on top of all of that, it wasn't even like it happened in Kona, Hawaii. It happened in some random show in the middle of nowhere. It was the absolute middle of nowhere. Maybe that was why they figured no one actually watched this. <laughs> There's certainly no one in the building. Anyway. Gobsmacked. That happened. That absolutely happened. By the end of this, I was convinced Iron Mike Sharp is the best wrestler who ever lived. He's low key at first, like, ah, bah, bah, bah. but he keeps going. He claps. I'm tall. I'm giant Mike Sharp. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.